Si a largo se mache de día. Soy más zorra todavía. El fumo es inchuzé. I leave that to the professionals. Uh, and I sang it completely more out of tune than Nebulosa, which I didn't know was possible. But hey, what's <laughs> up, Eurovision people? My name is Sean, and on my channel, I talk about all things Eurovision, as you can see. Um, we are joined by the lovely faces for one last time during this Eurovision season before rehearsal starts. And I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves, starting with my right. My right. Oh, it's me. <laughs> you're usually down, but today you're on the right. I'm usually down. I'm sorry. <laughs> Blonde moment. Well, as everyone knows, hi, I'm Becca um, from Malta been on these live streams for a very long time because I am a very very good friend you should be you should be, you should be very happy with our friendship Sean thank you and so now I will go Arabia. down under is that me then yeah I guess because <laughs> you're up <laughs> <laughs> hi guys this is Erwin I'm from Budapest uh, I I'm the chief editor of ESC Bubble, and I'm here for the third time, if I'm not wrong. So I'm guessing I'm doing something right, other than just uh, not agreeing on anything with the guy on my left. But yeah, <laughs> smooth transition. <laughs> well, we'll see how today goes. Usually, that tends to be the case. Uh, but hello, this is uh, Eston from Estonia, and actually calling from Estonia. I'm back from Iceland for a couple of weeks before going to Copenhagen. And the YouTube channel is a Eurovision guy. And now, Sean, take it away. Of course, mm. I'm your host, Sean. Um, from cloudy Spain, but representing Spain, Spain representing Malta. I'll and your know. eight points go to? I will tell you later on. What are we talking about tonight? We are, this is the fifth live stream of this season, and we are talking about the big five and the host country, Sweden. We've been doing these live streams for four Wednesdays. We've talked about all the semi finalists. You can find this on my YouTube channel. And tonight we close things off with the automatic finalists and the host country. But before we start, as always, pull up a drink. Pull up a drink. We cheers. love to cheers. cheers on these live streams. We love to take it easy. We love to enjoy it while we talk about this thing that we love so much. And it's called Eurovision. And while you're here, of course, take this opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Lots of content that has that is behind me and lots of content that is still coming during Eurovision week. I will be in Malmö and I will be in Cop actually Copenhagen, not Malmö, but I will be oh. there for a few days. So maybe we can bring some content on the ground. What do you think, Eston? Maybe we can... Well, we yeah, did have blog. one one idea uh, from the last video we did. So uh, <laughs> how is it going, by the way? <laughs> Any progress? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going fine. Good, it's going good, fine. Good. Um, and of course, while we chat about the big five and the automatic and Sweden, come and interact with us in the live chat. We will respond to you, of course, and we will talk to you as we are talking to each other here. And of course, since the introduction of this live stream shows, we're going to kick things off with. I'm in tune this time. Lyrics out. But I'm in tune this time. We're going to talk about Spain first. And we're going to kick things off with Irvin, of course, because he's my favorite <laughs> opener. Shocking. Shocking. And I know you have thoughts. I know you have thoughts about this one. So might as well go ahead and kick us off. I'm sure Eston does as well. And they're going to be completely the opposite <laughs> thoughts to what I, uh, the ones that I have. Yeah. I don't even have to say anything. You know it's going to be completely opposite. Yep. Well, 
for me, this is one of the catchiest songs this year. And I loved it from the first time I heard it. And I was really hoping it was going to win uh, Benidorm Fest. And to my own shocking, it did. Um, I love the staging. I understand the staging. Uh, I love the song as it is. I love the lyrics because they're in a way slightly daring, but they're super cleverly put together. Uh, the whole thing to me makes sense. Might be because I understand Spanish, might be because I don't know, um, but I just loved it. It's true that uh, the vocals could be much better than they actually are. Um, that's, but that's literally like the only negative thing I can say about the song and performance. I also love the story of the song. I love how in the performance, she's the madame, how they kind of like switch from normally like ladies being the ones who are gonna, um, how to say that. Um, basically the two guys are- uh, Show some skin. Yes. A little bit. Thank you, yes. <clears throat> Slightly. Um, slightly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but come on, like honestly, uh, they're, they're getting judged a lot more just because they're guys. If it was two girls doing the same thing, they would not be judged. It would be Seen a business times. as usual. Yes. Um, I, I'm really happy that they won. I don't care how they do, in, uh, do at Eurovision on the night. I listen to it on my Spotify. I'm going to keep listening to it on my Spotify regardless whether it wins, which is not going to happen. Or if it comes last, which is a little bit more, I give it higher chances for bottom of the scoreboard rather than the top. But regardless, it's a great song. I love it. Eston, feel free to disagree. Drum I'm rolls. <laughs> I'm not gonna... Go ahead. Small transition. Um, yeah, well, but what else is there to say? Uh, we kick Wait. Our heads off. <laughs> you agree? <laughs> I said I'm not gonna disagree. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> what? I, I typically, actually this year, after a few years, I didn't follow Benny Dornfest at all because the songs that I typically like, no one else likes, they never win. The songs that win, I'm not the biggest fan of it. And the Spanish fans are not <clears throat> really merciful if you slightly dislike their songs. But never, they they would never were. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, they're always so so fun. Uh, yeah, and and so is the song. It's just fun. It's mm -hmm. pure joy, and she enjoys it. Everyone, I mean, it's just fun, and that's the point of of the song. And uh, of course, as you all know by now, love the eighties disco sound very much, and. This is right up my alley. Um, the vocals usually bother me quite a lot if they are uh, not that perfect. But in this case, actually, OK, the high notes are, let's not talk about those. But overall, it's listenable. And the song is good. It's catchy. It's fun. And I just enjoy it. It's difficult to rank, but exactly like you said i don't care how it does um and let's just enjoy the party thora, exactly thora, the thora. Exactly now i'm interested who were your favorites in the past two editions of benidon fest let's leave that for another discussion okay <laughs> <laughs> becca I i'm not gonna um, just oh, um, throw boy. away the, the Spanish yeah. uh, fans that I just made. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's let's enjoy it while it lasts. Let's not ruin it. Becca, are you well, feeling like a Thora? Maybe I am. Um, <laughs> I completely everything with you with what you guys said. I mean, it's a fun song and. I appreciate the way, you know, Spanish always try, try to do something different. I mean, as last year they had something completely different compared to this year. So it's nice that they actually try to do something completely different than the previous years. Um, um, I was still rooting for Jorge Gonzalez to win, but anyways, um, oh, come on, Irvin. 
don't judge me. Um, but anyways, I'm definitely gonna enjoy this song. I mean, as you guys said, her vocals unfortunately aren't the best, but I definitely looking forward to see how this is gonna go like um, on the stage. But I don't think this is gonna go well. I think maybe come maybe around twenty fifth, around thirties. I think I don't think we're gonna do that well. Yeah, please, it can't come thirtieth. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of a Serhat, but female and from Spain. Oh my yeah. god! <gasps> yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh, that's true! And I detested that. I mean, song. neither of them can sing. Both of them have fun songs that the general public really loves. I think the comparison is quite accurate. Yeah, I think the comparison. Uh, Orvin obviously, obviously disagrees, but I mean, we have to get back there uh, where yep. we normally belong. So <laughs> the universe is back you to know, normal. Yeah. You know what's the funny thing? That's a lot of Televo points she needs to get to come up to Serhat level. Serhat came 10th in the Televo. He didn't score that um, high, though, even though he was 10th. He got 65 points. Yeah, that's not that much. <laughs> it's quite low. I don't know. Um, I went on a journey, I feel, with this song. I love the studio cuts. I really, really enjoy the studio cuts. I think the lyrics are okay. I mean, it's 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 a good story. It's a good, it's a good um it's it's good lyrics. It's good lyrics. But when I saw the performance in the semi-final, I almost got kicked out of ESC bubble. Because I stated the obvious. <laughs> because I stated the obvious and I said, in a room full of Sora fans, oh my God, the vocals are terrible. And I guess that wasn't the right moment because people were enjoying the performance and everything. And I came like a thorn in someone's thighs and said, okay, guys, the performance is terrible. But yeah, it, the, the vocals are, 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 you said it. it this is a female segment. I actually don't like the performance either, the staging and everything. No, I didn't. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. At all. Um, I don't know what it was that turned me off, but yes, yeah. Who? Who? Who's, 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 who's is it? I don't is know. It done? Well, um, I am right now in Tartu in my uh, student society, and we just had a meeting, and now um, people are enjoying more of these and possibly filming some videos. I'm glad. And... I'm glad. Send them the link to this live stream. Um, uh, we, we, I, I, did. I did. They can ask so questions. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I didn't get the performance and everything, and I didn't really... I, I think I would love to see this whole performance reworked for Malmo. However, I kind of expected this to win because this year in Benidorm, really, they didn't have many choices. I mean, especially after we saw the live performance performances, Spain didn't really have many options. So it seemed natural for me, for them to go with their viral streaming hit. It felt natural for me to see them go with the song that everyone in the audience was singing. And I saw a lot of Spanish fans last year saying, oh, what like, what could have happened maybe? What if we sent Vico and not Gentera? The absolute viral hit. So I, I, I expected this to, to inch forward. Um, I, I want two things to be changed for Malma. One, I, I really liked her styling in the pre-parties. I loved her pink kind of crop top and then a pet. She, she looked very free. She looked very uh, libre, free, yeah. And it was, it, it was a good, it was a performance where she felt like she wasn't encaged in some frock, which made her very kind of, it, it was hard for her to move in the black outfit in Benidorm. And secondly, actually I've heard some performances of Nebulosa where the vocals weren't that bad. So I'm like, okay, so you can do it. Girl, you can do it. So why is it so inconsistent? I think if she if she gets those 
few notes at the beginning, I don't think the vocal performance would be so off-putting because that's where, you know, she's opening her mouth, we're waiting to see what she's gonna sing and it's an off-key note and everything else is okay. If she can get those notes and then the, you know, she, she sings her way how she knows oh, yeah. through the rest of the song, then I think it's okay. But Spain, I, I, I like the fact that Spain chose this. I think Spain has really gone, you know, since Benidorm Fest, we've had Chanel and there was lots of pressure on that. And then it did well, but then it left a sour taste in the mouths of fans because of the voting allegations. And then the Kyle Hanagami drama, Chanel can't even dance the choreography of slow-mo anymore. Then last year we had AIA, which, you know, lots of hope on that, but it, it, it didn't really get the, the result that, that people expected. So I'm really glad Spain is saying, you know what, you can kiss our toes. We're going to give you the song that we like. We're going to give you the song that we're listening to. And you can either like it or you cannot. And we will still care the same amount anyway. I think this is coming 21st place. But I don't think people will care. People will just enjoy it. People will just have fun. They'll have this kind of song in your vision. And that's really the, the Italy effect, I call it. Like, we're going to give you the song that we like. And you can either like it or you will not. Simple as that. And I appreciate that from Spain. I think we need to have more of this, like, you know, we believe in our product, whether you reflect it or not. Because then eventually someone will start liking it. And it will build a bit of an identity for the country at Eurovision. Any final thoughts? Or we Sorry. can move on. Sorry. Or we can move on from Sora to... Wait, I need a peg. She's unforgettable. Uh, 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 uh. This is just me, they sound like very... You, you are in the mood of singing tonight. They, they, they sound very, like they have squeaky voices. Is it just me? I think so. Maybe. Yes. It's fine. I can be a Sora on my own. But, <laughs> Eston, what do you think about Sweden? As always, I like it. It's a just, I mean, it's, it's what Sweden does always. It's a well written, classic Swedish pop song, uh, extremely polished, both with the song itself and the staging, which is the main selling point, I would say, of the song. I think with a weaker or less impactful staging, this probably wouldn't even have won uh, Melody Festival, and because the song, in my opinion, is not enough in its own. It is a decent song, uh, maybe slightly worse than air was last year but without air. basically basically the same song just different words and and slightly different uh, instrumentation but it, it's sweden in eurovision nothing groundbreaking uh the jury will again give it a lot more points than the televote especially with the running order opening the show i think uh result wise bottom half of top 10, but left side of the scoreboard at least. And yeah, good uh, pop song, nothing groundbreaking. The song is kind of forgettable. The staging is what kind of saves it. And yeah, it's Sweden. I like it, but I don't actually really listen to it that much. I feel like this is one of the least Swedish entries that's being talked about like in the last 15 years. Maybe because it's host country, so there's not that conversation of will it qualify, will it not? But I think more people were talking about France and if I were sorry, then Marcus and Martinus. And a lot of know. people are just butthurt as well and hate Sweden because they do so well. I guess. Ervin, what are we thinking? Is this song forgettable or unforgettable? I don't think this is forgettable, but I don't think it's unforgettable either. Uh, just to disagree with Eston on one thing, uh, let me start. It has to be one thing, yeah. of course. <laughs> I mean, first of all, like everyone who knows me knows that I'm not like such a big fan of Sweden in Eurovision in general, and I'm not a I fan fight. of the Festivalen uh, because for, 
Sorry? High five. Um, in Melody Festival, like I stopped watching it years ago, uh, as in like the, the qualifiers. And uh, I normally only watch the performances from the final, either live or delayed. Um, because from the moment the song is going to start, I sort of have an idea how everything is going to go, uh, including the melody, including the beats, including when they're going to look at which camera, etc. when the fireworks are going to go off, everything. Um, this one was actually quite a positive surprise because even though it has like an absolutely slick performance, which is very Swedish, I don't find this song that generic and it's very, very well produced, if not even like slightly overproduced. Uh, it has it has a nice melody that stays in my head, the part which uh, comes in the chorus, uh, in the instrumental part of it. And I think that is also part of the reason why I kind of quite like this. It's not one of my favorites, but... Uh, I can definitely listen to this song, and uh, it's one of the songs that I have on my Spotify. How it's going to do, I have no idea. I kind of expect a similar result as they had in 2018, where they're going to score super high with the juries, mostly because of the performance. The public might not give them such a huge support, maybe a little bit more than Benjamin Ingrosso did. But overall, I'm expecting somewhere like mid-table ending. Slightly better than um, Tusse. Um, and maybe maybe something similar to Benjamin and Grosso. Yeah. Becca, we watched this live in Melody Festival. In. Yes, we did. What are your thoughts? It's a very forgettable song. I mean, so we did watch Mela Festival, and, and to be honest, there wasn't really a great um, competition, Lina. you know? I mean, it wasn't really. So I think uh, Marcos and Martinez were, I think, the best option. But then again, it is what usually Sweden said. I mean, you can see that this is a Sweden production. I mean, you wouldn't expect any different, honestly. So it um, unfortunately, it's a very forgettable song. But I guess... Just what Sweden needs, just a wake up call to say, look, your song isn't just your song is not great simply because you're from Sweden. Yes, I like that. I would love and to. I like Sweden, but they need to hear it. I would love to hear that call. <laughs> I would love to, 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 to see that call even taking place. Um, I'm not sure I agree with you, my dear, about Sweden didn't have many options. But I, I am clearly alone on this one, I guess. I mean, we know there I was like living in a bad, world, but you know, there are always, always options in Melody Festival, and there are always I living, options. I mean, it wasn't the best lineup in the world. No, it wasn't. But, it wasn't. It's just, but, I mean, it's, compared compared to other national selections, this is still up there. With I don't. Sunray. I don't think so anymore. No, I don't think so. Talk to Pez Mazzaro with you. Sanremo is mm -hmm. calling, and why is it kept? Melody Grand Prix and UMK are taking the top two places. Oh, I'm this not this year. Not this year. I think it was better than Melfest. But anyway, conversation oh, God, for no. another time. Um, I was living in a world where, where we could maybe get better because I really, really, really like that song. Cover but your they face. Don't like you don't like <laughs> yeah, no one likes yeah. that. Apparently. Everyone was nodding, but Urban. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's a, sorry. It's, it's I'm sorry, testing. where did she come in the show? Last. Exactly. Well and deserved. It was, all, all and the, it was all heartbreaking. The all national selections are deserved and all the places, last exactly. places in the Eurovision are no, but this la No, but this last Thank place was, was deserved. In your opinion. Yes. Thank you. And the Swedes, um, apparently. <laughs> um... Uh, it's interesting. The song is called "Unforgettable" because we're about to see in coming. You know, it will it will be the first one performed, and I don't think Sweden has ever been this early in the running order in the final because obviously Swedish, but it's just, like in the last I don't know ten years. Yeah, I'm they not... won from the first position. <laughs> I I, I was past. born in 1999. Forgive me. <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting also that. 
again, you know, we're having an entry on home soil performed by anything but people from the country. They are Norwegian, fun fact. Mark no sweets this year. No, no sweets. sweets this year. And I find it very like, come on, Sweden, where's your pride? I mean, you're, you're on home soil, on home soil. I want, I, I was thinking actually after Lorien won, and you know, Sweden has, has been doing well at Eurovision. I think, I think no one really checks for Sweden anymore because it's, it's almost a given. I was thinking maybe this would be the one year that they would send something a bit maybe in Swedish or something of a traditional. <laughs> I would have loved to see maybe on Henrik Fjolgren yoking his way to the, to the like, I, I thought maybe if there would be one year that they don't care to win, they would do something in Sweden. But no, we- Sean, you, you know that's, that's not gonna happen. Apparently not. I mean, if it wasn't happen, if it didn't happen this year, I don't know if it will ever happen. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I don't like their voices at all. I feel like they have a severe, congestion in their sinuses. I, I find their voices to be very squeaky and I don't get endeared by Marcus and Martinez as performers. I actually like watching interviews from them because I feel like there's the one who's serious and there's the one who has severe ADHD and I feel like they complement each other. I like their <laughs> interviews, but I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's just very funny to watch twins being very different from each other. Um, I, don't, I don't like this. I don't like this. And it's really, really funny to to see Swedish people, Swedish commentators on Eurovision always saying that, you know, Albania is a one-trick pony at Eurovision. Italy only sends big ballots. Ukraine always sends ethnic stuff. And then the same Swedish people will fight you in the comments and say, yeah, this is what we're good at in Sweden. We know how to do pop and we will always send pop. So who's the one-trick pony, may I ask? I don't know. It's 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 very it's very arrogant, quite as it's kept. But it doesn't change my my opinion about the song. How will it do? I think this is coming top ten. Easy. I think the juries are gonna mm. love it. Yeah, I think this is coming top ten. Um, and I also think the televote won't dislike it as much as we think because there is an expectancy with certain countries at Eurovision, and I do think that the televote low-key, expect Sweden to be sending pop perfection. And call it what you want, dislike it how much you want, but this is a slice of pop perfection. I'm just not into that kind of cake. But it's, it's, it's very subjective, but I do think the viewers expect this kind of stuff from Sweden. Um, and speaking of pop perfection, we're going to move on to the United Kingdom, represented by Oli Alexander. From years and years and i'm going to start with Irvin because i'm curious to know what you think about of course you as do. always <laughs> i was surprised i didn't start talking about sweden i'm um, going to give you a bit of a break you have to have some variety that's but that's now you yeah. yeah we have to let you open the show and then we have to give you an albania slot and then you open um. the show again <laughs> you know <laughs> Oh, where to start with this one? Uh, you, you said going from one pop perfection to another, this is not pop perfection, this is far from perfection. Uh, this is your, I don't know, um, early 2000s um, Euro pop slash dance song written by numbers, in my view, for a guy who performed in multiple three parties, couldn't sing the song properly in any of them. Um, he's a perfectly nice guy. He's a perfectly likable guy. The song is weak. I don't know. It just skips me. No impact at all on Irvin. Interesting. Nope. Um, Eston, let me guess. Tonight is the, th the theme tonight is, what's the word? Not, not compromise. Um, unity. Agreeing. No, not unity. Agreeing. It will come to me. But do you agree with Erwin? No, absolutely not. Comfort. <laughs> I love this. Uh, oh, God. Yeah. Um, I, actually, I was really struggling with how to rank these uh, for Sean because I could swap basically all of them, but one who is 
certain last place around and initially i put uk first then i put it like fifth then i put it like second then i put it like third i can't decide with with all these songs it just depends on the day the hour the minute um william UK, william <laughs> william i was getting there i was getting there <laughs> Uh, this is a well-written pop song, and uh, well, unlike Irvin, I actually really like the early 2000s, and I still love, love the sound. Um, nothing wrong with it, absolutely. Uh, it's just a different pop genre than, than Sweden. It is a bit more on the dated side, but I don't care about that anyway. Oli can sing. Um, Unfortunately, some performances have not gone his way, but I think in Eurovision, uh, we will get a much better performance. Uh, the staging, the UK most likely will go big on this one as well. Um, so... Just like they everything... went last year with Mae Muller looking like she's going to her day job from nine to five. Well, that was... <laughs> Is that she wrote the song? Yeah, that, well, that was a deserved uh, last place, which it, she didn't get, uh, unfortunately. But yeah, I mean, again, uh, I feel like I'm really repeating myself. Just a well-written pop song that is very pleasant to listen to, that I listen to quite frequently, quite happily. And I hope they can do relatively well, meaning somewhere in the mid-table at least. Um, but it is, I can see it totally bombing and coming in maybe even like bottom three, four, yeah. but I can see it in an ideal scenario coming top 10 as well. So it really depends on the performances, how the vocals are, how the record is, and of course, the, the staging, which we don't know anything about, but in the upcoming days, we will learn more. And um, for now, just a nice sound to listen to. Pekka, are you dizzy from my kisses? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> um, wants more. I mean, I've always been, I've been a fan of years and years, like since I can remember. I mean, I love your songs. For years and years. For years and years, there you go. Um, <laughs> I mean, I like this song. It's like, as you guys said, it's a fun pop song. It brings back um, early 2000 vibes. Um, it's a song that you listen while you're like on the radio while you're driving. It's a kind of song. I mean, something that you don't want to enjoy too. Um, but then again, it's not something special. It's like there's something, there isn't something that I can really connect with this song. It's just, it's just another like fun, vibey song that you just listen for three minutes just to get to where you need to while you're driving. And that's it, you know, it's just like something here on the radio. Um, so yeah, it is just there, but Middling. it's not something special. Middling. I actually, I would like to know why. We have no official pre-party performances on YouTube from Oli Alexander. I'll tell you after the live stream. Uh -huh. Well, we should put the kettle on because some tea <laughs> is about to, spill, to be spilled. Um, I find it very weird. And I, and, I, and I watched some performances of him on like some phone cameras. And I thought the vocal performance was actually decent. And I wasn't expecting Oli Alexander to come into Eurovision being able to sing. My problem with this is this. I actually really like the song, but there was too much hype coming into this. Eurovision fans never learn their lessons. When you have a big name coming into Eurovision, you need to extinguish any sort of hype because then what happens, the song comes out and everyone is disappointed. Case in point, Oli Alexander, Dizzy. There is literally no hype about this anymore because so there was so much hype in the UK about the song and the song came out it's a decent song. It's very faithful to his to his discography. I don't mind it at all. This is like 17th on my top 37. Not not in my top 10, but not in my bottom. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Brits, calm down. Um, I kind of feel bad for him because he seems to be under a lot of pressure from pro-Palestine activists 
at the same time, the BBC is anything but. So he seems to be caught between two words, and it really shows in the London performance because he really seemed like he didn't want to be there. There's a lot of press about this that makes me kind of like, mm, mm, you know? And I feel like wherever he places, literally, <laughs> the, the, the UK fans at Eurovision every year, they're like, we want a big name, we want a bigger name than the, the one before. But then when you get some sort of big name, like Wally Alexander, look what happens. Nobody wants to do Eurovision in the UK if we're going to treat them like this. And I kind of get it. But I like the song. And if that's the final thought, we're going to move on to Mon Amour. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, God. Rebecca Nicole de Guara, let's get rid of the rain before we can shine some sun. I don't like the song. That it much we, un me, we understood. It puts me to sleep. I really. It does. I, I've tried. I've tried. To, I really tried hard to listen to it to see um, what you know, what the song is about, what the hype about the song is about. It's just I can't. I can't. And it just reminds me um, of France 2021 of Barbara. And it's just, I'm sorry, but Barbara can never like, that is something completely different. She did a wonderful job. And I don't think France of this year can actually. Slamant could never. Slamant. I, I don't even know his name. Sorry, Slamant. Um, it's just, I can't connect to this song. You know, I, I just. Yeah. I just I just simply can't. I mean, it's to be honest, it's it's good that we have a, like a ballet compared to all these pop songs, these fun, energetic songs that we're having this year. It's just it's not the sort of ballad um, I was looking forward to hear from fans. I mean, as I said before, I can't seem to connect with this song. I'm sorry, Solomon, but um, I will skip you this year. Ta ta. Wow, Eston. I have a feeling that we might be onto another disagreement. Kind of yes and kind of no. Um, the vocals, perfect. <laughs> the song, uh, for what it is, excellent. Uh, with minimal instruments and, and what they use, a very good outcome. I mean, just like for example, Bridges from Estonia last year. Um, not that I'm comparing the, the songs itself, just the concept. Uh, Slimon, very experienced, very well-known artist, uh, very successful artist, definitely will draw some attention from France itself, which is desperately needed. And everything is, is there, <laughs> but just like Becca, there's something missing that I can't personally really connect with the song. I do like it, but I don't listen to it. I think I will enjoy the performance in Eurovision when it comes on, but it probably won't create any big emotions. It's well executed. Everything is well done, but just the heart or, or something is missing that made Voila so special and so stand out because that probably was my winner in 2021. This just cannot get to the same level or even near that level for some reason. I don't know why exactly, but in that regard, I really do agree with you. I just can't connect with it. I like it. It's well done, but something big is missing. Je sais. No, je Je sais pourquoi. I'll tell you why you can't connect with it. Um, before, I really like the song. I really like the song. I connect with it, but I can understand why people don't connect with it. And before he started to perform in the pre-parties and on, the, on, on some other national finals, I liked this more than I do now. When I saw the performance, one word, flashed in front of my mind. Arrogant. This 
product comes across as very arrogant, in my opinion. Yeah, the time he steps away from the mic and he starts, I cannot. I absolutely cannot. Just sing the song. It reminds me a little bit of the national final performance of Michael Rice, Bigger Than Us, when the song was absolutely nothing. And to tell us that he can sing, he was doing all these vocal runs. It, 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 it's a little bit like that for me. Like, okay, you have a good voice, you can sing, we get it, but just sing the song. And that's why I don't feel like this is anywhere similar to Bridges and Alika, because Alika, bless her, she fuck, she just sang <laughs> Language. the song. Sorry. She just sang the song. Excuse and your I'm French, gonna need, please. Yeah. It's French, baby. It's not a maybe. I, I, that's, that's the thing for me. And the, the French delegation should really be careful with this, in my opinion, because we know, I mean, I'm, I'm here in Spain on the border of France, and we, the, the stereotype of French people in many places of Europe is that they are arrogant. And I don't necessarily oh, yeah. agree. I don't necessarily agree. Maybe because I can't everyone from French. No, but, but clearly you know about that stereotype. And I wouldn't want to give off that impression on the Eurovision stage especially if I'm trying to get televotes to, to, to come top 10 in Eurovision, something France hasn't done in a couple of years, certainly not many times in the last decade. But uh, the song, I really, really like it. I, I play this. I, I genuinely do like the song. It just comes across as arrogant and pretentious with the whole performance. Oh, oh, and that the pre-parties... So we're in Barcelona, we sing a line in Spanish. We're in London, we sing a line in English. We're in Sweden, we sing a... Come on, they stopped doing that in the 70s. Please, really? They stopped doing that in the 70s. He wants no to cares. show off his language skills. But he doesn't have any. He, doesn't, he can't speak Spanish, he can't speak English. Mm -hmm. So why try? So reserve them for an interview. Just but I like the song. Time. I think this is going to get a very Destiny-like result. Strong Imagine in the jury. His face. Strong in the jury. I think it's a prettier face than Destiny's, though. No shade. Well, there we go. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, strong in the jury, I think, but not not that great with Telvolt. I can see 47 points coming for this. Ervin, uh, quickly, Franz, any thoughts? He's a great singer. I don't mind the song. I'll never play it by choice. Do -do. Nice and sweet. Thank you very much. It just doesn't come from the heart, and that's the problem. No. I'm always on the run when I listen to the song. I ain't starting. Irvin, why not? Family. <laughs> 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 oh God. <laughs> um. I don't know. I know that a lot of people don't like this. And I know that a lot of people are predicting this to come last once again for Germany. But it's not as bad as everyone makes it be. Hmm. It, hmm. It's quite a decent, slightly more on a modern side pop song. More modern than some of the other ones that we spoke to and disagreed with today. Um, Isaac or Isaac or however you pronounce his name. Uh, I'm not sure. He is a great singer. Um, he, in my opinion, he deservedly won the German national selection. Were there better songs? Maybe. Were there better performances? Not that sure. Oh boy. I would be very interested to see. Sorry. Oh boy. Just my opinion. I didn't uh, like it either. Didn't like what exactly? Sorry. Oh boy. The song uh, by Rick. Oh, oh, I, oh, okay. Sorry. No. I completely forgot about that. I was thinking about some other two that were uh, that were all right and decent, but that wasn't one of them for me. Um, I'll be very interested to see how they do the staging in uh, Malmö. And uh, yeah, I expect this to do better than a lot of people think. Not amazingly, like not going to be in like the top 10, I think, but it's not going to do as badly as everyone thinks. Rebecca Nicole D'Aguero. What are we thinking about Germany? Once upon a time, you used to learn German, right? Once upon a time, ages, ages ago. <laughs> it wasn't that long uh, ago, but okay. <laughs> I mean, no one needs to know. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm personally, I'm not really good at languages. Sean knows that. But 
Um, <laughs> and like Sliman, apparently. <laughs> hey. Um, so I don't mind this song. I mean, it reminds me of this artist. I don't know if you like you know him, Rekko Bowman. Um, and I actually really like the, the artist, so it does remind me of him. Um, but then, as Irvin said, I know that many people don't really like this song. Uh, but I don't mind actually listening to it. Um, I don't think it's gonna do that bad as people are hoping. I mean, I don't think it will come lost. Um, but it has a nice vibe to it, and yeah, I'm, I'm like, I like prefer. I don't mind that. I, I mean, then again, it's it's there. I feel like with the big five, like they should have done a bit more effort this year. But that's my opinion. Um, but yeah, I don't mind it. Is I don't know if uh, Stefan Rab is going to be involved again in the national selection from next year onwards. So we'll see. What the how they do that? Uh, I'm going to need some Stefan Rab because this one is my number 38 of the year. I. Um... Oh, you're one of those people. 38 of 37. 37. 37 we have this year. Yes. 37. It's, it's like um, that because he's going to come, they're going to come 30th out of 26. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. In Malta, we never learned how to count. <laughs> um, Apparently. I am sorry. Germany, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Come on now. This is one of only two songs this year. Every year I have this category of songs, usually at the bottom of my rank, and I label them the category of songs that I didn't need. I don't need these songs at Eurovision. Last year I had seven. This year I have two. This one and Iceland. I oh, don't come need, on. I don't uh, need. And what about Ireland? Whoa. No, I could do with Ireland. I, I, I think Ireland at least is giving us something interesting. No, Whether you no. like it or not, and I've already said that I don't like it. This is this is this is Isaac's cheek. No, what Germany's ha what cheek. has Germany do to you? Germany's cheeks are split down between a fence. One cheek on another, one cheek on, on the one cheek on one side, one cheek on the other side. This is so inoffensive, so middling, so woke, so it's like AI. Make me a, a, a song that will not offend anyone, that will not make any reaction among anyone. And this is what you will get always on the run. I don't like it. I really, really, really don't like it. The song is bad, in my opinion. The staging is bad. The The vocals are good, but it's like, you know, there are a lot of these people in, in pockets of the internet, of the fandom, who are like, but his voice is great. Listen, if you want to make a carbonara, and you give me the cheese, the, the, the guanciale, and the eggs, you, you throw me these things in front of me. I'm going to be like, where's the pasta? And that's how I feel like we have we have one ingredient here, the voice. Where is the song? Where is the song? There is no song. Come on now. Germany. Guten Morgen, please. And I it, this is so unnecessary that I feel like Germany is just trying to stay under the radar almost. I feel like Germany is trying to stay under the radar. That's and Denmark. Same, 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 same. Yeah, actually, I might add that to my song, to my category of songs I don't need. Same. Um, yeah, Stefano you know. said, at least Iceland, at least Ireland has done something remarkable. Yeah, I, I agree, agree, Stefano. I agree. I agree. I think Ireland, whether you like it or not, and I repeat, I'm not one of those people who love it. Well, I but, am. Yeah, it, it's, it's brave. It's brave and I uncompromising. Love. And I, Ireland and Greece, Eston's nightmares. But I agree, Stefano. <laughs> thank, you, thank you for uh, talking to us. And while you're at it, anyone who's watching, by the way, come and subscribe. Come and subscribe. We're talking about the big five. We're, we've talked about five of them and the whole country. I've only got one left. Um, Eston? I oh, know, one. Sorry, my bad. One, one. Um, Eston, quickly. <sighs> I am going to spoil this. I know you don't like Germany, and I'm really, really pleasantly surprised. Go for it. Es ist so ein Schade, weil Rick wunderbar war. Aber 
I uh, nobody said that I don't like this. It might be my last out of the top big five and and the host country, but I don't dislike it. Ah, I I actually really liked it at first, but that was pretty much the only time because it just I grew bored of it so quickly, um, and it's just middling, like you said. But I deeply disagree with middling being worse than just bad. Uh, at least I can listen to this. I could never listen to Ireland and Greece. Plus points, they tried something different, but minus points, they failed horribly. But Thank you. Time, and Stefan, Stefan Rapp, uh, please come and save Germany. Yes, Stefan Rapp, yes. Come and come. If, if you're willing to do something a little bit, please come and save Germany. Um, I don't where think are you said, just, that, just to be but... clear, I don't think he's coming back as a performer. He's going to come no, back no, no, as yeah, a yeah, show yeah. producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he was I think better in that role than, than as a performer. Well, that's, whenever, that's whenever he was involved with Germany in Eurovision, in whatever way, performer, uh, producer, literally anything, Germany always came top 10. <laughs> and they also won the contest with Lena. Exactly. The only um, person in Germany who understands Eurovision. I don't necessarily agree with the fact mm -hmm. that because Eston, we can no, no one can deny that this is middling. Like whether you like it or not, I really like this is objectively middling, even if you like it. However, you find Greece and Cyprus, sorry, Greece and Ireland bad. That is subjective. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so but for me. Uh, like the rankings and, and disliking or liking something is very subjective anyway. And for me, Germany mm. is inoffensive and that is better than being offensive. I say offend who you can because some people might take compliment in that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not uh, disagreeing with that. Just for me personally, only for me personally. Not saying it yeah. for anything else. Yeah. Well, from my number 37 of the year, because I learned how to count five minutes ago, we go to my absolute favorite of 2024, Ella Cumbia de la Noia. But obviously, in typical fashion, I'm not starting, and I will let Eston <laughs> start this one. <laughs> Eston, what to do we are dancing do? with Angelina Mango. <laughs> oh, Italy had so many better options. Yes, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I <They still>. said. <laughs> do you want to take it away? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, my heart will always ache for Irama. Oh, yes. But this year also, sinceramente, just ma magnifique, magnifique. Becca has ordered this... a portrait of a Eurovision vision guy to hang <laughs> on her bedroom walls. I just did. <laughs> With an Italian flag. With an Italian flag. You can edit me holding an Italian flag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I did rank this first when I when I sent my rankings to Sean, but I don't love it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It's like jumping between something I really enjoy and something that is quite annoying for me. And But I do think overall it's one of my biggest growers because initially, the first time I heard it in, in San Remo before doing the live stream for that, absolutely hated it. Um, I, I didn't like it at all, but the, the more I started listening to it, the more I, I liked it. And I can recognize the great performance. Mm -hmm. She is incredible. She performs the hell out of it. The vocals, always perfect. She's in it. The song is absolutely <laughs> well produced. Everything is there. And yeah, like I said, it is just the most unpredictable song for me this year because it can be in my top five and it can be like 30th or something for me, just depending on when I listen to it. Um, 
but it tends to be more towards the uh, the front end. Um, so at but, the time of speaking, where does this find itself in your ranks? At the time, yeah, I guess somewhere in the middle. But when I listen to it, I always like it more than I think I like it before listening to the song. So <laughs> it, it's a weird, it's, it is a really weird one for me. Um, I wouldn't like this to win, but yeah, other than that, it's, it's just a weird one for me. And it goes up and down, but Italy still will get a top 10 result uh, for sure, probably even top five. And Irving a potential has. winner. Thank you. Irving you has speak yes. some sense. I know. Uh, he was like, Aston was finally uh, showing some like good music taste there when he said that he started liking it more the more he listens to it. Um, I mm. quite enjoyed it for the, from the first time when I heard it in San Remo. And uh, even though it wasn't my number one pick, I don't think there were that many songs that were more deserving of a victory than, uh, than she was. Uh, certainly me. not in. Um, you're excused. Uh, certainly yeah. not in the in the top five. Yeah, I mean, we need to create Lana. another chat for Lana. us. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys can go and get to know each other backstage. Leave us alone. I mean, I, I did love Ricky e Poveri, but uh, they wouldn't have been a good pick for Eurovision, to be perfectly honest. I'm glad that they were in San Remo, and uh, I actually still listen to that song. Uh, the only song that I might have maybe preferred a little bit more to represent Italy, and this is where Aston is going to disagree once again, is uh, On the Alta by Dargen D'Amico. But uh, I don't think that Italy did, uh, did a bad choice with uh, Angelina Mango whatsoever. Uh, it's a great song. It always gives you some like positive vibes, especially like uh, when you see her perform. Even though she's always like alone on stage, you don't actually notice that so much because her energy just like blows off on stage, uh, which is a great quality to have. And uh, the song is very catchy. Uh, everyone can sing along to it. You don't need to be able to speak Italian to sing along to it. Manoia. Exactly. And this is why I think that a lot of people are just going to catch up on that. And uh, I do think that she is actually in a great shot for a possible victory in Malmö. I regret saying these words. Rebecca Nicole de Guerra. <laughs> <laughs> you have always known from the beginning that I'm not a big fan of this song. Each time we hear this song, <laughs> I always go, Annalisa, Becca, number one, Italy. <laughs> Can I just give me a second? Just give me a second. Okay, despite me sending Annalisa should have won Sanremo, okay, I do think that Angelina is a great artist, she's a great performer, performance, because she is. I mean, she can definitely sing, she can definitely give a performance, she can dance as well, and so I think she has, she's a great artist. It's just, I don't think that um, she deserves to win. But then again, Compared to when I first heard the song to nowadays, um, I do tend to like it up slightly more than when I first started, like when I first heard the song. Santa I think, I think, and I think Italy actually will do very well. Um, Christosina Salvani, shut up, let me speak. <laughs> And the reason why I gave her I gave her first crown because from all the big five, from all and also with Sweden, Italy is the best out of them. I mean, she does have the whole package. It's very true. So I had I had to give that to Italy. Um and I still will continue. Hoping one day that Annalisa will present Italy, but until then we have Lanoya, which she can really annoy the hell out of me sometimes. But anyways, <laughs> um, I can't. I mean, even performance-wise, I think on that stage, on Eurovision stage, I think it's going to be 
a very good performance, despite me not being a fan of the song. I just have to add that I, I actually heard the song playing Hungary on the radios already. And wow. like, we're not even competing in Eurovision. So, yeah. There you go. I mean, it, it, it is a good song. It's just, mm -hmm. it's not what I would have wanted Italy to represent with. So, did you point the Grazie, the rest of the world? Mm -hmm. This is my number one of the year. Have I said it already? I have. Yes. Well, it again. Might this have mentioned is... once or twice, yes. Or maybe Multiple twice. times. <laughs> Listen, this song is. And you're immediate. annoying. This song is immediate. Like the song. This song is one of the few immediate songs this year. And I say few because obviously some people don't really understand what the word immediate is because there were comments on my winner potential video asking me, what do you mean by immediate? Immediate is you hear the song once and it gives you an impression. Whether you like it or not is a completely different story, but it gives you an impression. You can hear Mon Amour, you can hear Dizzy, you can hear She's Unforgettable. They're not immediate songs because you might need to listen to them twice or three times to actually make up your mind about them. This one, one time is enough. You're either bopping your head about La Noia or you're like, nah, I'm good. And I think that is that immediate songs win Eurovision, really. Immediate songs win Eurovision. Every song that's won Eurovision since Euphoria has been an immediate song. The focus and the stage performance, the, her stage presence, are unmatched. I'm sorry. Nobody this year, and I will dare say between this year and last year, nobody has a vocal and stage presence combination like Angelina Mango. You can tell me Laureen. I don't think Laureen's vocals were as good as Angelina Mango's. You can tell me Kalia. I don't think Kalia's vocals were as good as Angelina Mango. This year, we have I'm Baby Lasagna, we have Nemo. No, I don't think Chanel's vocals were as good as Angelina Mango. I don't think so. I don't think she had as challenging focus as Angela Mango. I mean, seriously, this girl has an acapella bit after she's been dancing around stage for two minutes alone, and she pulls that acapella bit perfectly. And this is maybe coming from me, a bit of a musical head. I appreciate it so much. And this is why every time I watch or listen to the song, I'm like, how can she do that at 22? This is rare, especially in, in a day and age where we do not expect our pop girlies to be able to sing and dance and hit the notes at the same time. This is rare. And I really, really appreciate this, this product for that, for that on its own. I also love the song because it's bringing something very fresh to Eurovision. It's bringing a Latin piece of bread dunked in Mediterranean olive oil, spread with Italian sun-dried tomatoes from the region of Calabria, where I believe she's from. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think. It's somewhere in the south. I'm not sure if it's Calabria, though. Um, this is excellent. I love this. I really, really, really like this. A little note on Sanremo. I do think Italy had immense options this year. Of course, if Annalisa went, it would have been my number one. Irama, yes, Eston, I agree with you. You know, I'm always here on the Irama fan club. Not his best song this year, but of course, I would have loved to see him go. Um, and after Sanremo, I fell in love with Gali. Gali, Casamia, and the lyrics of that song are just perfect. Oh, God, the Sanremo walrus guy. Options. What? The walrus guy. Was it a... I, I, I call it a water buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. I have even no yeah. memory of that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That one. That one. Um, but... And unapologetically, Angelina Mango came out on top for me. And can we just can we just go back to Sanremo a little bit? And can we thank Italy for not giving us Jolier? Like, guys, it could have been so much worse. It could have been so much worse. We could have gotten Ipeme to Pete, which is not a horrible song, but the live performance would have been tragic. So let's 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 all thank our lucky stars that Angelina Mango is the one we have to put up with. And I'm not complaining at all. Prediction. I, I think we need to thank whoever was calculating those results. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, this is such a consistent product. Angelina Mango at the pre-parties has been consistent. 
not a single performance that wasn't full of energy, full of great vocals. She's carrying the song on her own. Again, a bit like Helene, I kind of want her to do it on her own because I think she really shines when she does it on her own. But, but I know she will have dancers. This, this stage, the choreography will be choreographed by the same guy who's choreo choreographing Greece. So I, I can't wait to see what's coming. Um, this, I, I think this could win. And the reason why I say it is we've had years where I think in 2016 and 2019, where the winner won neither the televote nor the jury. I think, and I explained this in my winner potentials video, I think this year we're going to have a jury winner that's going to come sixth in the televote. And we're going to have a televote winner that is going to come. I, I, I hope not, but I could see the televote winner coming not high enough in the jury. And that is where I think Angelia Mango could come second and third or third and second, something like that, and just be a compromise winner. I do think this is going to get tons of points from the juries. I do think the Televote is going to love this. This could be our compromise winner of the year. And I didn't keep my promise the last time Italy won, but this year I'm going to have to. If Italy wins, I'll be there. I'll be there. Um, Stefano if, keeps if, talking if to If Angelina us. needs a promoter, I think they should hire Sean. Ciao, Angelina, dimmi. Annalisa's song too close to Kylie Minogue. Some are arguing plagiarism. Really? I haven't heard that one. What song? I have not. Uh, Annalisa, mean? sinceramente. Sinceramente. Quando, 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 quando piango. Annalisa's song or Angelina's song? Annalisa's song. Annalisa's song. Oh. Too close to Kylie Minogue. Um, uh, no. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Stefano also says Nemo wins with Angelina, Switzerland and Italy next year, maybe Croatia too, all very close. Yeah, I actually think, you know what? No spoilers. Go and watch my winner potential video. I broke it down there. <laughs> who I think is winning what and eventually what we will see. Um, one question to round out the live stream Who do you guys think is winning Eurovision 2024? I'm going to start with Becca. Um, mm, I think it's either between Switzerland or Croatia. Irvin. Irvin. I think it's going to be either Italy or France. France? No. Oh, I didn't what? get to talk about him. <laughs> France oh, can't handle I... hosting Eurovision. They're hosting the Olympics. They can't host Eurovision next year. Well, the Olympics are this year. We're still like a host. Okay, Erwin, why do you think, why do you think France? Uh, as you mentioned as well, I think that we're either going to end up with an accidental winner or we're going to end up with a winner who's going to, again, run away with the points but from the juries because I don't think that there's going to be such a huge gap in televoting. And the one act and like one artist, one song that I actually see scoring way too many jury points for no reason is France. Actually, not for no reason. The song is quite good. The song is quite decent. He, his voice is amazing and I'm sure that like the way that they're going to do the performance is going to be like very intimate, very focused on him and uh, that that's something that the juries might go for. This is why I think that France is in a shot, in the shot for winning. I will cry. Wow. Eston. So I think at the moment the potential, potential, if that specific country does everything correctly on the night and everything goes in their way. Potential winners are Switzerland, Croatia, Netherlands, Italy, Ukraine, France, and Belgium. <laughs> Narrow it down to three. I would be personally happy if Croatia, Netherlands, or Ukraine wins. Um, Italy, I would dislike as a winner. Uh, same with the likes of France and, and uh, Switzerland. At this point, it is really difficult to tell. I think Italy has a good chance. Uh, I think Ukraine has been undervalued a lot. Uh, they still have a great shot at it as well. It is too open. 
and it is literally, I think, impossible to call the winner at this moment uh, before the rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Next week we can, or well, beginning of next week, we can already start uh, seeing the first rehearsals and uh, then discussing who is actually doing well and, and who is not doing well. Uh, this is way too open, anything can happen, but I do agree with Irving that it is likely it's going to be either a jury winner or someone who is very high in the jury and does well enough in the tournament. I don't know if a bunch of TikToks are going to change my mind, but I think the winner is going to be, do you know what? Check my video. I'm going to let it there. I'm going to tell you who I want. I'm going to tell you who I want to see winning. I am dying to go to Zagreb. I need a Balkan win. It would be so nice to see a country that's never won before. Mm -hmm. An Eastern European country. We need, we need Croatia to win. Please, on all that is holy. Italy is my number one. Croatia is very close, my number two. But please, please, Croatia. We need. And Monaco Croatia has win. improved so much. Yes. I mean, now that, that the true. latest performance that he did in what, Slovenia, I think, the vocals and and so many comments pointed out as well that he has practiced with some famous Croatian opera singer. She has done wonders because the vocals are actually great. He's more comfortable. And if you That's add good. the current vocals to the performance, that is going to be. I mean, it is clear it's going to be big because Croatia is really putting everything in this to make it win. And it would be the most deserved. And absolutely, I'm with Sean. This has to win. <laughs> Please. Mm -hmm. And I want to go if to you, if, if Croatia why? wins, I'll go to Eurovision next year. If not, then I probably won't go to Eurovision next year. If you want Estonia and I to go to Eurovision next year, we ain't doing crowdfunding. We ain't Sinan Sidula. You better We're not. We're asking you to vote for Croatia. We're asking you to vote for Croatia. And I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for joining me. It's been five lovely live streams. I really enjoyed talking this year about Eurovision with you guys. And anyone who's watching, comment, subscribe. We're not done. Eurovision week, we're going to be breaking down predictions just before the shows. The live streams are scheduled on my channel. Go check them out. Mark the not hit the notification bell. Put it on your calendar. I don't know. Do what needs for you to come and join our live streams because we're going to get down some predictions. And guess what? Becca, to my right, got a 10 out of 10 last year on one of her predictions. Did you ever thought that would happen? I didn't. So it can happen. Come and watch our prediction live streams <laughs> on Eurovision Week. Yeah, and nine. come and subscribe. Come and let us know what you guys think. Hit down in the comments. Who do you think is winning Eurovision 2024? We'll find out in two weeks. Have a nice evening. Thank you for watching. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.